Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, welcome back. So let's uh, start the lecture 4. We will be talking about how biomass is formed on earth. So the most fundamental or the most basic source of energy on life for life surviving on earth is sun. So it is the sun energy which is critical in the formation of biomass on the floor of earth, but is that the only route? So any conversion process involving sun, we, it falls under what we call as photosynthesis, which essentially if you split the two words like photo and synthesis, a light dependent synthesis of biomolecules or evolving life forms, a light dependent synthesis of life is fall under photosynthesis. So it means that essentially means light is falling on the surface of earth and anything which grows on surface of earth or surface of water bodies are photosynthetically driven. But is that the only route? Actually it was believed for a long time that is the only route. But apparently the discoveries in 19 late 1970s and early 80s of hydrothermal vents which are deep under the sea where no light ever penetrates. They are our life which bubbles there in those vents and that gives birth to another form of evolving life which is called chemosynthesis. So which are dependent on lot of sulphide rich transition metal sulphides, hydrogen sulphide. It is a very, very tough environment, but yet life survives there. And probably a life form which was very similar to the life which existed when the earth was formed and a life form which is possibly very similar to the life forms or any form of life if at all exist in Mars, in the planet Mars, which is that is why it is also called the Martian form. So, so let us start this topic with two terminologies and how they lead to the formation of biomass and the whole global spectrum of things. So, let us get back to the slide. So, our central question for this lecture, which is our lecture four is how biomass is formed on the planet of earth. And just now I described two words, one which is photosynthesis and the second word what I used is chemosynthesis. These are the two words or two processes. So, one is one is a light dependent process where sun is involved. The other one is purely purely chemical dependent processes which includes transition metal sulphides, and we will talk more on this transition metal sulphides, H2S hydrogen sulphide and the zone where such thing happens. So, if you see the location, this all these things happen under deep sea hydrothermal vents. One second. 
drip C hydrothermal vents. Whereas, when we talk about the life which is growing on the floor of earth or ocean floor, so, the, so they are on floor of earth and floor of ocean. So, location wise if you look at them, so this is all on the surface, this is all into the very, very dark places underneath the earth. And both these processes have one common thing, they both lead to biomass formation. And of course, they follow very different strategies for biomass formation. Light dependent synthesis, which is photosynthesis, leads to the formation of biomass. Okay. So, coming back to the slide again. So, here is our perennial source of energy, the sun and here we have just uh, yeah. okay so so this is the land mass and this represent the water bodies okay and as you are going down on the depth and this is the whole plants and all other different life forms which are growing on the floor of earth. And you have this lot of algal population which is kind of growing close to the surface of the water. And all this green biomass which is growing. Okay. Okay. So, what is happening here? In all these cases, what we are talking about, light energy is trapped. The sun solar radiation is being trapped by a solar harvester, which are the leaves or any green pigment which constitutes of chlorophyll. Okay. They trap the solar energy. So, you are trapping the photons and in that process, after trapping the proton, there is something called a membrane where a gradient or a kind of a battery is being created through which you drive a chemical reaction. So, let us write it down standing. So, you have sun which is giving you the solar energy. So, here you have green pigments of chlorophyll which are present on, we will come in, in detail how they are present. So, they have chlorophyll. So, chlorophyll traps the solar energy. We will talk about all the details how they do so and what are the significance of it, but just at this stage kind of get an idea. Traps the solar energy and creates a uh, charge gradient you can call it across a membrane of chloroplast across the chloroplast membrane And we will talk about all these things. So, do not get worried because we will take time to discuss each one of these processes, how it is happening. And the energy which is generated because of this chloro across this chloroplast membrane drives a
drives a chemical synthesis and as you could see it is a synthesis process. So, you are making things of making energy rich molecules. Okay. So, solar energy, so there is there are a very specialized organ called chloroplast. Those chloroplasts, so let me just put it getting back to the slide. These chlorophylls are present on chloroplast. They are named as chloroplast because they are, if you look them under the microscope, there is a color pigmentation. So, these chloroplasts are present. So, if the plant cells are like this, if these ones are the ones which are constituting the plant cells. So, the chloroplast within the plant cells are present like this. We will come later about the structure of the chloroplast. Within the chloroplast, you have the chlorophyll molecules and across the chloroplast, molecule, chloroplast membrane, a uh, energy gradient is being created. That energy gradient generates sufficient energy, which you see out here, which drives the chemical synthesis to make energy rich molecules. And these energy rich molecules eventually, which are produced there, one second, in the process what we are describing the photosynthesis. So, let us split it photo or light. Through this, you are generating synthesizing synthesis of energy rich molecules. And that those energy rich molecules constitute what you call as biomass. So, does that make sense? So, you have the solar energy falling on a solar panel, biological solar panel, the leaves. On the leaves, there are specific solar energy trappers called chloroplast present inside the plant cells. There are numerous chloroplasts. Those chloroplasts consist of a membrane and a light trapping molecule called chlorophyll. We will come in depth into each one of those, how they look like and how they function. Those chlorophylls which are present across the membrane of the chloroplast converts that light energy into a form of a charge gradient and that charge gradient generates sufficient energy for the synthesis of the biomass. So, now if I go back to the very first slide where I was talking about this situation, so this is what is happening. Now, so this light energy which is falling on these one second. is the one which is governing the formation of biomass. Okay? And this whole thing falls under the whole area where, so here is the source of photon or photo sources which are governing the process of photosynthesis. Okay, is it clear? And further we will talk about how this photosynthesis process, what are the mechanism called. But that gives you an idea that if the photosynthesis efficiency is more, then there will be more and more conversion of light into biomass. And that will bring us to different kind of life forms, whether it is so, photosynthesis, coming back to slide, so different kind of plants, bacteria and algae. And within plants, we will talk about C3, C4. So, what is the take home message is very important here 
the efficiency efficiency of photosynthesis is directly correlated with biomass formation. This basic concept is very important for all of you to understand. Whenever we talk about bioenergy, why it is so multidimensional, you have to understand photosynthesis. What are the nuances of it? What is the significance of it and where it matters the most? So, if you have efficient plants which consumes less water and it are exceptionally good photosynthetic apparatus then and have a higher efficiency then they are better off. Say for example, just for an example think of it, take your imagination, stretch it. Those of you have traveled in the desert say in Thar desert in Rajasthan or any other desert as a matter of fact across the world, you will see there are specific vegetations which grow, thorny bushes. So, think of it for a minute, there is hardly any water and yet those bushes are functional there, they are working, they are trapping solar energy in spite. So, it means these are the plants which could be a very good source of biomass because they could efficiently convert a lot of solar energy even in the absence of water or scarcity of water. In the absence of water will be a wrong way to usage it in the scarcity of water. So, if we know how hardy those plants are and if we could really you know bring some of those qualities in producing biomass in producing plants over a large area, then we can produce more biomass with higher efficiencies and we will talk about all those things. So, in this part of photosynthesis which will be phase 2 of the part 2 of the course we will be dealing with we will talk about the photosynthetic apparatus. So, this is what we will be talking about one second, yeah. So, we will talk about, we will talk about photosynthesis, photosynthesis, we will talk about uh, the apparatus, we will talk about the process and we will talk about the current status photosynthesis. This is what we will be dealing with. But having said this, in the beginning I told you something else. There is another life form which survives somewhere out here, where no light energy reaches. That is why I am kind of drawing it in dark. Okay? This is out here, deep inside the hydrothermal vents. So, that is what we talk about the chemosynthesis. So, what happened in that situation is deep inside the ocean floor, in the bed of the ocean floor you will see these kind of structures from where lot of there are these are called brown and white smokers. So, lot of magma, lot of sulphide rich gases which comes out deep inside. So, this is we are talking about many, many miles underneath into the ocean floor. Okay? So, that is where you will see lot of life forms are growing around it like this in the hydrothermal vents. So, this, these are the hydrothermal vents. hydrothermal vents where you have no oxygen, no O2, you have no light, no oxygen, no light, you have high pressure, yet life thrives in this region. Out here life is thriving and this could be a big inspiration and I will dedicate 
one of the <coughs> topics and by the way just uh, to rehash there is a lot of H 2 S, F E S 2, molybdenum, there are a lot of transition metal sulphides and there are very specific microbes which are grows there and this is the whole world of the dark world of so this is the dark world of chemosynthesis and upper one is the bright world of photosynthesis so these two are the processes which we will be discussing and especially with the chemosynthesis in the later half we will be talking about some of the molecules which could promote the biomass formation. Okay. So, this is the overall architecture of chemosynthesis and photosynthesis which are helpful in the production of biomass across the floor of earth. Okay. So, this is where I will be concluding my this lecture where we talked about let us summarize what we talked about. We talked about one second we started our lecture how the biomass is formed. So, we talked about photosynthesis, we talked about chemosynthesis. Okay. So, the floor of earth which is filled with and the deep sea hydrothermal vents where we talked about the chemosynthesis and photosynthesis which happens on the floor of earth and floor of ocean but the whole idea was biomass formation and then we talked about all the different life forms which are involved in it plants, bacteria, algae, microbes and so many other things. Then we talked about the process, the overall process how photosynthesis happens. From there we talked about how we kind of split the word photo and synthesis of the energy rich molecules and then we talked about the life forms at the darker zones of the earth. Okay. So, I will close in here before we move on to the lecture 5. Okay. Thank you.